If you will go with me to John 3, 14. I'm going to continue to preach the gospel to you, and I'm going to show you, and I'm going to end with a testimony, and then I know Dole's got a whole bunch of testimonies oh. that goes with this. John 3, 14. Uh, let's, go to, let's go to verse 12. It says, If I told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And notice what Jesus says here. Even as, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Jesus is comparing himself to that serpent in the wilderness. Let's go to Numbers 21. We're going to look at that serpent. Uh, Numbers 21, I'm going to begin in verse 4. And the Israelites, the Jews, they traveled from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. This is so hard. This is taking forever. Why do we have to do this? They were murmuring. It says, and the people spoke against God. And they spoke against Moses. Notice, Amen. they spoke against God and they spoke against Moses. Amen. It says, Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is any water, and our soul loatheth, that means hates, this light bread. They hated Amen. the food God fed them with. Thank God. It says, And the Lord sent, because of their murmuring, because of their complaining, he said, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and Amen. they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Amen. If you can't do anything else, just keep your mouth shut. Amen. It says, and therefore the people came to Moses and said, after the serpents bit them, serpents in the wilderness, snakes along the ground, biting people, many people died because of the snakes. He said, therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. They were in trouble because they spoke against God and they spoke against the man that God had sent them to get them out. Amen. It says, For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Remember, folks, a bunch already died. A bunch already died. Amen. They can't fix it now. They're dead. It says, And the serpents among us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it up on a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, that everyone that is bitten by these fiery serpents, everyone that's bitten by the snakes because they deserved it, everyone that's bitten by the snakes because they couldn't keep their mouth shut, everyone that's bitten by the snakes, he said, uh, if they, when they beheld the serpent of brass, he'll live. He'll live. All right, let's look at it again. It says, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon that serpent up on the pole, he shall live. And okay. Moses made a serpent of brass, put it on a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. But he had to look at the serpent and not look at the bites that he deserved because he couldn't keep his mouth shut. Now, go with me to 2 Corinthians 8. Amen. Keep that in mind. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. Amen. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace. The grace. Something you don't deserve. Amen. Something you get that you didn't work for. Something Amen. you don't deserve. It says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Amen. He became poor that you, through his poverty, might be rich. It says the grace, something you don't deserve. And what did you not deserve? Jesus became poor. He became poor. Jesus became poor. He left heaven. He was a God. And he came to earth and he was a man. You know, he wasn't poor when he was on the earth. If you read the scriptures with your eyes open, he had a house. He had a bunch of women following him, giving him money. He had men giving him money. He took care of himself and the 12 apostles with him and all their family. He took care of these 
people out of his own bag, out of his own money. He wasn't poor, folks. Amen. They had money, and, and, and you know what? In the wilderness, they forgot, you know, they didn't have any bread. They didn't have money to buy bread. They make the bread. The man was not poor. Amen. The man was not poor. Let's go to Matthew 27, 35. Let's see when he was poor. Matthew Amen. 27, 35. Uh, and they said, and they crucified Jesus. They put him up on the cross. And they parted his garments. They took everything the man had on him. They took all his clothes. Remember, Jesus died naked. Amen. And not only did he die naked, they took what he had on him, anything that he was carrying with him. And it says, and they parted his garments right in front of him, down in front of him. He's naked, and they're fighting over his clothes. <laughs> Do you see that? The Roman soldiers are fighting over his clothes. Amen. So what do they do? He's got a nice coat. He's got a nice coat, folks. He wasn't poor. They said that it was woven from the top to the bottom. In fact, it was so nice. They said, let's not cut this up into four pieces. Let's cast lots. Let's see who gets it. Amen. The man's hanging there naked, and they're casting lots. I get the coat. I want the coat. Well, I get, what's the, what number did you get? I got the coat. Whoopee. I got his coat. And he's hanging there naked. Amen. You see, he died poor. He died poor. He's on that cross. And he's poor. He's poor. Do you see that? Do you see that? The man's poor so you could be rich. So what Amen. do you do when you are not looking like you're rich? You get your eyes off your pocketbook. You get your eyes off of the situation you're in. And you get your eyes on that, that cross. Not the pole. The cross. Jesus on the cross is poor. Amen. Poor. He's naked. Naked. Doesn't own a stitch at this point. Thank God. Why is he naked? So that you and I are rich. Amen. It's an exchange. So you keep your eye on what Jesus did on the cross. And I will tell you this, and I learned by experience. The money will not come, and then you're rich. You got that? Amen. The money will not come and then you're rich. You will be rich first Amen. and then the money will come. Amen. He said, well, that doesn't make sense. You will, be, you will believe. You will believe what Jesus did for you on the cross. You will believe he became poor for you. And when you believe that, when you believe in your heart that because of what Jesus did by his grace, that he became poor for you, that Amen. he went on the cross for you, when you believe that in your heart, that that made you rich, that's when the money will come. It will not come first. It'll come after. You know why? Hebrews 1, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 11, 1, for faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the evidence. What's the evidence? Jesus on the cross. Amen. The evidence of seeing things not seen. You're going to be rich first, Amen. and then the money will come. You know, when I finally got the revelation of this, and when I started tweaking it out and started walking in it, it was amazing. And I've told the story before, but I, I believed Amen. God, and I started getting hours to make, to, I made more hours, so I made more money. Because I believed the gospel. What well, didn't stop there? When I started Amen. believing I was rich, that I was rich because of what Jesus did, Amen. I couldn't help. He caused me to prosper. Amen. He caused me. The, I worked for a grocery store that decided that they were going to make a whole other chain of stores Amen. that were going to be like a warehouse type grocery store. And when they decided that, I was still working for them, making little signs at home. Four, four by five was most of them, hundreds of them Amen. a week, and then I would deliver them. That's what I was doing. But God caused me to prosper. Why? Because I believed that I was rich through the gospel of Amen. Jesus. Not because of what I deserved. Not because I deserved it, because of the grace of Jesus, he became poor that I might be rich. It was something I didn't deserve, but he made me rich. And you know what they decided Amen. with these grocery stores? God made one of the men that was on the board, one of the men that I worked for. He became, he got promoted, got this wonderful position on the board. And when they needed signs for these eight huge grocery stores, he called me. 
He called me, he said, Kathy, you gotta, you gotta uh, make a bid for these stores. I said, I can't do that. I said, I just make little banners and small signs. I said, I can't take on a whole grocery store. He said, yes, you can. Amen. I said, no, I said, his name was Tom. I said, Tom, I don't have the equipment and I don't have the personnel. I don't have the employees to do this kind of job. I knew it was going to take a lot. He said, Kathy, you can buy the equipment and you can hire the employees. You can do this. Amen. You know what? That man had more confidence in me than I did. And you know what? I realized it was God talking out of his mouth. Amen. He didn't care who did the signs. He was promoted. But God convinced me out of his mouth to go ahead and do that. Do you know that a little woman that was less than 110 pounds, and it, well, nope, at that time she was pregnant. She was even pregnant. And God caused me to prosper and I did the signs for all eight of those grocery stores and the profit that I made off of those bought the equipment with cash that I needed and that's when the business started. Why? Uh -huh. Because I believed first. 